got it fixed. And thought, I kept telling him it sounded like it was just the external speaker recording. And I guess something was going on with that. That's it. Yeah, he was just checking, he was checking it out. I got lid in this kitchen, and it, it wasn't like plastic, it was made, I think it's kind of like that Ikea stuff, it's all wood, but I knew when I got it, the thing weighed like 100 pounds, and it was in a box, no bigger than this guy. I opened it up Christmas Eve night, and I said, I'm going to throw this together, and I'll be done. It took me four and a half hours to put that one thing together. It was all wood. It was in tiny pieces. The screws were all separate in this thing. It took forever. It's huge. Though. It's just pretty little pictures. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I used to do that for white someone out there back in the day. I used to put things together for them. And, yeah. That was my one of my whole jobs. Sit back there in the warehouse and put things together. Well, I knew when he took the box was too wide that everything was just lined up in there. Yeah.
to stand. We're going to go ahead and get into our service. Um, the Bible says bring your alms and your tithes to the storehouse. So uh, kind of one at a time, if you will, go ahead and do so. this morning you can keep a play in that um, in the book of Psalms it says there was basically some hard times going on Israel was always being judged for falling away from God continuously and if we really looked at it deep you know we'll find out just how much God loves us through his, his uh, through his wrath sometimes through his judgment we find out how much he loves us because he always wants us to come back to him when all this mess started I said that I really believe it was God getting our attention I don't know that that's the case I don't want to preach my opinion <coughs> I hate for somebody to lose a loved one as I've lost my uncle this week and not understand why as Michael stands so preacher, a man of God, um, righteous man, I know that he is. Uh, his fruit bears witness to who he was in Christ. Grew up in an awesome family. Um, I remember his mom and dad. I graduated with his brother. But I remember his mom and dad, how nice they was to me as a child and growing up. Um, and I know what kind of man he is, how he was raised. And for him to you know, die of this coronavirus, it's hard for me to say, well, if God sent this, I don't know. But I know over in the Bible, I've said this at the beginning when this hit, that you know there was time where God sent pestilence, which is an epidemic, which got the eye of the people that was straying away from God. I can say without a shadow of a doubt that our country is straying away from God. That we've fallen away from God. You personally, maybe, I don't know. But as a country, we're, we're allowing too many things to come in. Sometimes God's got to get our attention. But it goes on here in Psalms, and I won't get into it because it's my message, but over and over, about three times in this chapter, he says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness. We can sit over and over and over and look about how bad things are. And if you talk to anybody, that's usually what they're talking about. About how bad things are. But if we would just praise God for His goodness, if we would just think about the good things, don't want to get ahead of myself on my message this morning, but we got an opportunity to come in here and it says, Oh, that men, oh, if men, in other words, if you would just praise God, praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men, and let the sacrifices, the sacrifices of thanksgiving, and declare His works with rejoicing. If we would just remind ourselves how good God's been to us, if we would just remind ourselves what all He's done for us, if we would start thinking in our minds of the goodness of God, it will cause men to cause, uh, cause us to repent of our negative attitudes, our negative ways. It would cause us to rejoice in the Lord. He's saying that there plain and simple. The psalmist is saying, oh, if men would just praise God, things would change. So I ask you right now, what, your opportunity, your time, Come in here and praise Him as right now. To worship Him. Yes, we can do it all week. We should do it all week. But right now in this moment in this time, as, he, as you're worshiping,
to a one-man audience, and that's Jesus Christ. I ask you, will you come and do so? Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you, God. We thank you for an awesome God. Lord, we thank you that your, uh, your presence fills your temple, Lord. Lord, that you come here today, Lord, and you brought the Holy Spirit into this room today, Lord. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom to worship. Freedom to praise. Freedom to just thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Lord, that you have been good to us, Lord. That all good things come to those that love the Lord. And we love you, God. Lord, take away all our negative attitudes and our negative thoughts, God. Lord, put in us a new wine of thanksgiving and praise, Lord. Change our hearts. Change our minds. Let us come up and lift up holy hands. Let us give us your heart. Our, let us give you our heart today, Lord. Because you're deserving, Lord. You gave your life for us. So we just ask this in the sweet name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
before I needed grace. Ooh. You sing your songs of redemption. Cause every time I ran away, you were louder than my shame. And now where would I be without you? Where would I be? Jesus, you were the voice of the desert. Calling me out in the dead of night, fighting my battles for me. You were my rescue story. You lifted me up from the ashes. You carried my soul from dead to light, bringing me from glory to glory. You were my rescue story. You walk you up. You were my rescue story. You hung you up. Never gave up on me. Never gave up on me. You were my testimony. Never gave up on me. Never gave up on me. You were my testimony. Never gave up on me. Never gave up on me. You were my testimony. Oh. Never gave up on me. No, you never gave up on me. You were my testimony. Oh. You were the voice in the desert. Color me. Story lifts me up from the ashes, carry my soul from there to life, bringing me from glory to glory. You were my rescue story. You are, you are, you are my rescue story. You are, you are. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare with your heart living hope. Your presence, Lord. I taste it and see. Sweetest of love, when my heart becomes free and my chain is undone, your presence, Lord. and we sing, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come place and feel the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord and your presence There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare to your heart living home. Your presence, Lord. And I'm 
taste it and see I'm the sweetest of love And my heart becomes free And my chain is undone In your presence, oh Lord In your presence, in your presence
help me to be thankful for the trials as well as what you can give. And help me to see that it's all in your hands from beginning to end. From the riches and the crowns to the furnace and the lion's den. So God.
to it. I don't care who you are in here, what you've been through. And boy, I've talked to some people that's been dealt some bad hands. I've talked to some people that's been dealt bad hands, but they make it a lot worse hand than it really is. I've talked to people, you can ask them how it's going, they'll talk about the start at the bottom of the feet, they'll wind up at the top of their head, or what's wrong with their body, and how bad it is, and, and we just doom and gloom, we're negative, and, and, and that becomes part of our lives. A lot of people, they're just really not happy unless they're worrying. They'd rather be in drama, they'd rather be in negative, they'd rather be in, in, in a bad situation, because that's their comfort zone, that's what makes them, I guess, irrelevant. What makes them feel something? We know in the Bible that when 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 Elijah was calling down, uh, when when he told the prophets of Baal to call down their God, and eventually they wouldn't call down their God because well, there wasn't no God, and they started cutting themselves where they could feel something. And I believe a lot of times people um, think negative or want drama in their life because it makes them feel something. It makes them feel like they're something, but that's not of God. It's not a good thing. It's a bad mindset. The Bible says that, that for us to sit in heavenly places, we've got to set our mind on things above. So if we're setting our mind on things above, we're doing what this is right here. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. If you're in here and you love the Lord today, the good things are coming your way. Amen? Amen. And it may not be in the physical sometimes. It may be that... We can look around us and our surroundings are so bad that we think, how in the world can anything good come of this? we got to be like Paul. Paul from a prison cell. And I mention this all the time, but I just want to remind you that as I have to remind myself when I have a little pity party every once in a while, Paul went through some things continually from the time that he seen Jesus for who he was and to the time that he was... Um, uh, 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 martyred, if you will, for his faith. Paul went through some things continually. But every Friday that Paul had, whether it was from a prison cell or whether it was after a shipwreck or whether it was after he was stoned, every Friday that Paul had, he, he, he continuously rejoiced to the Lord. Because Paul, I said a hundred times here before, he had something on the inside that the outside couldn't take. Paul had something, and it was called Jesus Christ. And all good things come to him. He knew, Paul knew as he said, and he was torn between. you got to think about Paul. Paul was a man that was under a lot of hardship. He was being <laughs> treated pretty bad. They think that it's known that when he would go to a town that they would dig a hole. And, well, as he was coming their way, they would dig a hole and they would start throwing feces in this hole. And when he would get there, they would throw him in that hole. That was an old story that they would do to Paul. Paul would still go to these towns over and over, and you got to think, how in the world could Paul sit and say, well, I'm kind of torn between the two. I want to be with the Lord, but I kind of want to be down here, because I know that the Lord has a work for me, because Paul knew that God was with him, that no weapon formed against him would prosper, that he was going to be more than an overcomer. He knew the end result was going to be good. And when we live our lives knowing that God has plans for us, that the end result is going to be so good that our minds are going to be blown. It was said earlier, it was said of my uncle, it was said of Michael Stansel, that we was praying for a miracle, but he got a miracle. We was praying for my Christmas that he could be home, my uncle. Well, he's home all right, amen. amen. And the thing about it is, the end result is always good when God is in it. Because all good things work together to, to the good of them that love God. God loves you. How much do you really Love him. To them who are called according to his purpose. Everybody in here has purpose. I've told you this a hundred times. That you have a destiny. So let's get to the just of my, my message today. And you don't have to agree with me a little bit on this, but I'm going to preach a little bit of my opinion today, and I don't like doing so. But in order to wrap this thing up, I really got to throw a little bit of my opinion in there. But I want you to turn to uh, numbers. Is that the next chapter verse that I put up there, hon? I want you to turn if you got your Bibles or if you just want to read it up top. Numbers chapter 21. <clears throat> and this is a pretty awesome story. We find out over and over in the Old Testament, and I know when Jesus Christ came that he fulfilled the Old Testament. He didn't get rid of the Old Testament, but he fulfilled the Old Testament. 
We find out that the wrath of God was settled in Jesus Christ. Amen. Ain't that an awesome thing? That through Jesus Christ, that the wrath of God was settled. That's how the example of who Jesus is is even seen in this, in this chapter here. I always had a little hard time with this, and I'll show you this, what I'm talking about here in a minute. And they journeyed from Mount Hor to, by the way, is that the first verse that I have? By the way of the Red Sea, and they could pass from the land of Enon. And the soul of the people were much discouraged because of the way. I wonder how many people right now are discouraged by the way that life is, by the way that things are going, by the situation that they're in. Maybe not even the coronavirus, but maybe just the situation, the hand they've been dealt. And the people spake against God. I wonder how many's done that. What is God doing? Where is he at? Why is he doing this? And against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loaneth this light, lo, lo, loadeth this light bread. Hate it, in other words. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. It was, a, it was in a way, a plague. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord. And against thee, pray, pray unto you, the Lord, that he will take away the serpents from on, on us. They knew the answer to the problem. I really believe there's a lot of Christians out there today that sometimes question God. I believe America's in a mess. I believe the world's in a mess. I believe really, absolutely, if you turn on your TV, which I wish I would have never done, start watching the, the news, the Fox News, the CNN News, or even worse. But if you watch any news station, you'll see that, man, all they want to talk about is how, how, how bad the world is and how much hurt and how much pain and how much, uh, it's just a mess, if you will. So Israel was in a mess at this time. So what did God do? God sent judgment. And I'm not telling you, I'm going to tell you my opinion. I really believe that God is judging America. I believe he's judging the world. I really believe that this pestilence has come. I believe it's something to get us back on focus to God. I believe any situation in our life that, that, that gets us back on track or gets our mind. Because I want to tell you right now. We, I'll tell you me, individual, as a person. When things are hunky-dory, everything's going good. A lot of times I kind of... I worship God. I love God. I, 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 I never waver on that. But sometimes my mind's not on God as much as it should be. Amen. Amen. When things are hunky-dory and everything's going good, man, I'm, I'm just zippity-doo-dah, zippity-day. We need to have the joy of the Lord in us. We need to walk huh, in His righteousness and, and who He is and, and have our heads held high. You won't never hardly see me out. I don't know that anybody has and, Unless I've lost a football game or something and I don't look too good. I, I usually try to look happy. I'm, I'm usually an up to go kind of guy. But I want to tell you right now, sometimes I have my pity parties. And sometimes I get in the, in the dumps. But when I'm going zippity doo da zippity day, maybe my focus ain't on God as much as it is when I'm in the valley. See, sometimes we've got to get in the valley to even appreciate the mountain. Sometimes when we're in the valley, that's when we need God the most. I, I guarantee you, everybody in here can testify. When you're sick, you, you pray more. <laughs> when, you're, when things are a mess, you pray more. When things are not hunky-dory, you seek God more. Some of the uh, most intimate times I've ever had with God in prayer was when my mom was in the hospital, uh, when I've been sick, when things was going wrong. Uh, some of the most intimate times is when I've been in the valley. And you've got to ask yourself, what does it take for us to get closer to God? It takes valleys in our lives. But look at here. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. First thing is, we've got to recognize we need to get our focus back on Jesus. You see, they knew the answer to the problem. We should know the answer to the problem. We have tasted and seen that God is good. We know that all good things come to those that love the Lord. We know that anything that's good in this life is from God. Amen. So why in the world would we question him when things ain't as good as we think they should be? So what happened is they sinned against God. So God got their attention. Look what he says. We pray thee the answer to the problem that you take away the serpents. And Moses prayed for the people. And this is what I, I was talking about a while ago. And the Lord said unto Moses, make thee a fiery serpent. I thought, man, this, 
I've always had a little bit of issue with this in my mind, which I know, now, I, I know what, after reading this this morning, I know what the answer to the problem here was. The fiery serpent really represents Jesus Christ. Look what he says here. And he set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten. I want to tell you right now, we've all been bitten with sin. Amen. Amen. We've all been bitten with, with wrongdoing. We've all been bitten. The Bible says that every, no man is righteous, no, not one. We've all made mistakes. You made mistakes. You may only have to polish your crown once a week, as I say right now. Maybe you got life all worked out, but I'm going to tell you, sometimes we lose our temper. Sometimes we doubt. Sometimes we this. Sometimes we that. So we all make mistakes. We all fall short of the glory of God. So sometimes we get bitten. Amen. Ain't you thankful that all it takes is looking at Jesus? Look what he says right here. And everyone that is bitten, when they look upon it, shall live. The answer to the situation, the answer to the problem, the bad mindset, the, the negative in our life, the answer to the problem is we just need to start looking back to Jesus. And it says here, and Moses made a serpent of brass and put it on a pole, and it came to pass that if the serpent, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. I am crucified with Christ, but yet I live. Not I that live, but Christ that lived through me. I believe sometimes we're not living life to the fullest. We're not mindset on Jesus. We're not sitting in heavenly places because we're too. We got one foot in the world and one foot in heaven. Amen. Amen. We got one foot in the, uh, on this side of the fence. We got one foot on that side of the fence. We're straddling the fence when it comes to our joy in the Lord. Don't mean we're straddling the fence on our salvation. Our salvation is secure in Christ. I'm so thankful that I don't have to do so many things every day to keep my salvation in Christ. But I want to tell you this right here. In order to keep the joy of the Lord, I've got to honor Him. Amen. I've got to focus on Him. David said, I've lost the joy of my salvation. Things happened in David's life that caused him to lose the joy of his salvation. Not that his salvation changed. He was secure in Jesus. Or he was secure in God by his belief. But, but we are secure in Jesus. And I'm going to tell you our salvation is there. We need to hold dear to it. We need to cling to it. And nothing in this world, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We've got to believe it. Look at here. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched on both. And they journeyed both and pitched. No, I went too far. Psalms chapter, chapter 106. This is my next verse. Psalms chapter 106. So we know that the children of Israel had to turn to what we would think of Jesus right now. The representation of the Messiah. The one that would be high and lifted up. Do we agree with that? Amen. But look what Psalms 106 says here, in, starting in verse 42. Their enemies also oppress them. What is our enemy right now, our common enemy that everybody in this room has? The coronavirus. It is oppressing us. Everybody in here's life has been changed according to it. Amen? Amen. We're staying at home. We're not... I mean, I don't know about you, but I didn't, I'm 47 years old. The first time I didn't spend Christmas when my mother was this Christmas. Things have changed. We're being oppressed by the coronavirus. I'm not scared of it. 40, 48, 49-year-old man just died of it. I could die of it. I, I know, where, I know where, where my help comes from. I know that God has a plan for me. But I'm going to tell you right now, I know that if my mother gets this coronavirus, then she's going to pass. So I don't want to be around my mother with, with, with anything. Amen? And I'm sure you could all be the, you could all agree and you can all say that you've been in a certain situation. So we're being oppressed. Our lives are being changed due to an epidemic, a pandemic. But look at this. This is so good. I want you to, I want you to get this. And they were brought into subjection under the hand. It's all we're all subjective to it. Many times did they did he deliver them, but they provoked him with their counsel and were brought low for their iniquity. Huh. Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction. Nevertheless, even though we can be hidden sometimes, God's love is trumps all. Amen. Man, God's love for you is so strong, man. He wants to pull you out of the miry clay. He wants to sit your feet on the rock. He wants your mind. 
The Bible says that those that mind the things of the flesh will go after the flesh. But those that mind the things of the Spirit, if we can sit in heavenly places in the Spirit, I'm telling you right now, God's ready to move in our lives, no matter if there's a virus around us, or things, or finances ain't in order, whatever it may be, God wants us to focus on Him. Look at this. Many times did He deliver them, but they provoked Him with their counsel, and were brought low to their iniquity. Nevertheless, He regarded their affliction when He heard their cry. How many of us is really praying people? How many of us are vain repetition people? Man, it's the same old prayer, same old thing. Mind set on something else while we're doing it. How many are really crying out to the Lord? Crying out to the Lord. I'm not sitting there talking about boo-hooing the whole time you're praying. Maybe that'll work. Maybe that's what we need, that heartfelt cry. But I want to tell you right now, man, we need to be crying out to the Lord for our country. We need to be crying out to the Lord for the sick. We need to be crying out to the Lord for our situations. Really crying out to the Lord. Trusting in Him to move. And He remembered for their co His covenant and repented according to the multitude of His mercies. He made them also to be pitied of all those that carried them captive. Save us, O Lord, our God, and gather us from among the heathen to give thanks unto thy holy name and to triumph in thy praise. Blessed be the name of our God of Israel for everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say amen. Praise ye the Lord. I wrote here the answer to Psalms 106 goes into the next chapter. It's all about what we're testifying to. What is your testimony in here today? Are you testifying to the goodness of God? Or are you testifying to the negative of a pandemic? Are you, are you testifying to the negative of prosperity? Are you testifying to the negative of health? What are you testifying to? Are you testifying that all good things come to those that are the Lord? Are you testifying that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me? Are you testifying to I can, that, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper? Are you testifying that greater is he that is in me than he is in the world? Is your mind set on things above? I want to tell you right now, if we set our minds in heavenly places, there is no sickness. There is no disease. There is no affliction. When our minds are set there, we can think about things above. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. I want to say that again. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Let me, I was thinking the other day. My, 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 my boys get a present every week. It's our kind of a little tradition that I've done. From, from Thanksgiving on, we give one present. I just started it because they get everything on Christmas and they can't play with everything. They throw one thing to the side. So I give them a present every once a month, every week. My boys appreciate it. They're excited. When they open them up, they, man, it might, not, it might be clothes, but they act like they're excited. And I know that they don't want clothes. I know kids. Amen? <laughs> but they're excited. They're thankful. They're, they're, it, it's just getting a present from the father, the mother. It's just something about it that cheers them up that makes them feel good. If my children was not so... So what happens is I want to go out and buy more stuff. It's just the truth. When they appreciate something, it makes me want to do more for them. Are you getting what I'm saying today? Spiritually, we're spoiled rotten brats. <laughs> we don't even appreciate what God's done for us. We, we take for granted that we got a car, we got a house. When, when if you got both of them, you're, you're in the top 2% of wealth in the world. If you got a roof over your head and a car to drive, you're in top 2% of wealth in the world. We take for granted for that. God's blessing us. He's given us things. Maybe a little thing. Maybe it's once a month. I don't know. Whatever it is. Whatever that present is. But we take it for granted. My kids, if they took it for granted, I wouldn't want to go out and buy them anything. They'd spoil rotten right brat. Wouldn't give them too much. But when they appreciate things, when they honor me, then I want to do for them. The Bible says that you know that 
We as humans know how to give our children good gifts. He said, how much more so does your Heavenly Father know how to give you good gifts? How much does He want to pour out the windows of heaven unto you? I heard a message of a guy preaching one time and he had a dream. And in that dream, God would took him and man, showed him the blessings of his life. Man, he was excited. Man, the blessings of my life was good. And he had doors there lined up. And he went and opened up a door, and man, it was just something that was awesome. I don't remember it. But he's like, wow, that's good. I missed it. What is that? And he went and opened door after door after door of the blessings that God had laid up for him that he missed out on because he didn't appreciate the things that he did give him. How many of us is missing out on the goodness of God in a lot of areas in our life because of our attitude, our half-set mind, our negativity and our unappreciation of what he's done. I'm going to tell you right now, man, I don't give the spoiled rod brats. And I don't know that God does. Amen? Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good, his mercies endure forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. May God redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. Did my microphone fall? Sorry, I never put the microphone on. I'll get in in a minute. Turn me down, man. Sorry about that. He said, He's redeemed us from the hand of the enemy and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and from every direction. The enemies come from every direction. Amen? The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. We know that. There's so many times in our life that God has protected us but from, from the enemy, amen? But he's still coming. Things are still happening. There's negative things happening all around us. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. What is a solitary way? I looked it up as a desperate, desperate, desperate way. When things get hard, we get desperate, amen? amen. But what are we desperate for? Are we desperate for answer to the problem in our way? Or are we desperate for the Lord to heal the problem in His way? They all say in desperate times calls for desperate measure. What is your desperate measure? Is your desperate measure to sit at home and worry all the time? Work a little more overtime? Or is your desperate measure to spend time on your knees? Reading your word. Fasting. I've got a buddy. Man... It's an unknown prayer request. I, would, I don't want to mention it on here because he probably wouldn't want me to. But it's a desperate measure for him in his life. I've never heard the word fast come out of his mouth. He called me this week. He said, man, this is, I'm, I, this is desperate. Basically, in his own way, this is a bad situation for me. Will you agree to fast and pray with me over this situation? Desperate times calls for desperate measure because I want to tell you right now how many of our, us are doing desperate things for the Lord? How many of us is going that extra mile to help that one in need? I told you last week we reap what we sow. If we're lonely, we need to be friendly. Maybe if we're broke, maybe we need to help somebody. And I'm not talking about getting all your money to somebody. I'm just talking about being there for somebody in their time of need. I pulled, I pulled over the other day, and I wasn't going to tell this. This was over a month ago. I pulled over to a person that was had a bad tire. And, and man, they, it, they were just acted normal. It was an old man, older man, older woman. And, and, and it was a bad situation. And Lord knows my heart. I'm not letting my right hand know what my left hand does. My wife's the only one I've told her this. But I 
was praying, Lord, to help me find somebody in need. Help me find somebody that I can help, whatever it may be. So I seen that guy on the tire. I passed him, went on down the road. I went a long ways, and I thought, man, God, is that the one you want me to go see? I went, and there was a guy changing his tire. He said, man, I just bought this tire. My tire's not doing that good. He wouldn't never even tell me about any, any of his problems. And I told him, I looked at him, and this Lord told me to speak, to speak to him and say, Man, do you got any food? I don't know why. I just did. I asked him if he got any food. His wife broke down on the other side. She said, We're living in our truck. We don't even have, it, it was very cold that night. It was very cold that night. She said, We're living in our truck. We don't even have a place to stay. And, 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 and I was going to give them a room. Our church does this a lot. And I want you to know that's where your tithes goes a lot. We'll get a room in Rustable for people in their time of need. We bought one last week uh, for a guy that was living in a laundromat in Phil Campbell just to stay warm. We do that. And, and it's a good thing. But they lived in, in Florence. They was just down here to see a family member. And, and, and they were staying in their truck. They had no food. They had no place to stay. I, I couldn't run to Florence at the time I was doing anything. So I looked at my bill phone. I had just enough room, money to give them a room for a week. And, and, and as I was handing them, at first I handed them $100. It was before I knew about the, 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 that was for food. And then I asked them about the room. They didn't have a place to stay. And you could tell they weren't just they wanting a handout. They didn't even want to speak of it. But when I did that for them, the, the breaking down of, of crying and appreciation for them that come from them. And I asked them, and Angela, I hope you forgive me for this. But, but she was crying. She said, we know the Lord. We, we, we've not had a close relationship with him. We don't even have a Bible because we've misplaced it somewhere. So Angela got me this beautiful Big lettered Bible that I love so much. I, my eyes is going. And I looked at my truck and the only Bible I had was that Bible. And I handed them that Bible. And man, it was just unbelievable, the overwhelming joy. I may not ever see these people again in my life. But I will tell you this right here. There's people out there wondering. There's people out there hurting. They're searching. They're looking. They need something. And the church needs to rise up and be what we've called to be. We need to be that head. We've got to have our head up high. We've got to walk with the joy of the Lord in our lives. Because if we don't do so, then people who listen to me that search will never see it. You heard the saying, we're the only Bible that somebody ever read. We're the only Bible that somebody may ever read. I'm going to preach my uncle's funeral Tuesday. My uncle is a man I've, that I've never met many of. I've never seen a man that had a heart as big as his. To give unconditionally, he was such a giver. Us at 12 years old, going to his house every weekend because he had four wheelers and them just letting us take them all. Give to me so many things in my life. And as I was sitting, thought about his, him going, I thought, man. I know, I know no other. No other man. None. Zero. And I'm not one with as big a heart as he's got. We as the church have to have that heart. We have to be that man that he was. Did he go to church every Sunday? Absolutely not. I believe he was a believer, a strong believer. Good man. His goodness shined forth. His is 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 it was, it was amazing to see his heart. But we walk around with our heads down, wagging our tails, not thinking of the goodness of God. Look what it says here. And he gathered them out of the land from the east to the west. God has gathered us out. They wandered in the wilderness. Verse five. I was hungry and thirsty. Their soul fainted in him. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distress. And he led them forth by the right way. How many of us is in the right way that they might go into the city of habitation, a city of rest, the fat pastor? Wow. And here's what I was talking about. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. Oh, if we would just praise Him. Oh, if we would just thank Him 
it goes on to talk about for he satisfied the longing soul. He filled the hungry soul with goodness. Such as sit in darkness and in the shallow depth, being found in their affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned them to the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought them their hearts down in labor and fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their stress, and he brought them out of the darkness of the shadow and of the death, and broke their bands of asunder. Then again, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. How many of us is there? How many of us is really praising the Lord for his goodness? So many bad things happening. I can't tell you why. I'm your pastor. I know I am. I'm supposed to have all the answers, but I don't. I don't know why. But here's what I do now. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Trust Him. Believe that He has the answer to all the problems. And one day, one day we'll all rejoice in eternity with Him. Whether it's tomorrow or whether it's 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, we'll all rejoice with Him. Never had bowed it right. How many of our attitudes has been terrible? We've not had an attitude of gratitude. Shame on us. Shame on us if we neglect the goodness of God, the mercies of God, the love of God. I want to tell you, <laughs> there's a thing around my house for my littlest boy. I'll, I'll say, well, come here then. Come here, I'll say. And he'll come. No matter where he's at, no matter what he's doing, he'll come over and he'll get in the Father's arms. And I'll love on him. Well, the other day he was playing his video game. And I come in there and I said, well, come here then. And he did. It stuck out to me. Because he never does that to me. How many of us in here really is Lord saying, Come here then. Come here. Come here. And we're playing video game. We're building our own kingdom. We don't have time for daddy. The Lord wants to heal, guide, direct, strengthen. wants to mend that which is broken. Strengthen that which is weak. How many of us have just come to the Father saying, come here then. Come. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I want to take you in like a mother hen does her chick, but you won't let me. You won't come to me. Come, cast your care on the Lord. He'll give you rest. He wants to do that. He wants to do that. Think of the goodness of God today and what He's done for you. Go into this year at New Year's with appreciation, attitude of gratitude, and see what the Lord can do for you as we stand.
It's good. So good. Anything on your heart, let's talk it over. Let's pray about it. Um, let's start this year thinking about the goodness of God. I really think there's good things coming this year. I think we're going to get this thing under control. And,